Far from a world of tyrants Beneath the western sky We formed a new dominion In the land of liberty The world shall... These were angry, defiant, high-spirited men from Scotland and Ireland, proud but poor sneeringly called the scum of the earth by English historians and their English landlords back in the old country before they joined the mass migration that peaked just before the revolution that summer in 1775. And here the King of England was at them again, but from across the sea. William Morgan invited the townspeople in Shepherdstown, Virginia on June 10th to a huge potluck supper, complete with big ox roasts, long boards of cakes, pastry, and hams, all to fire the martial spirit even higher. Rebellion in the name of owning one's own land and house was near. Just four days later, the Continental Congress appointed George Washington, an old comrade in arms with these men in the French and Indian Wars to raise an army and send it to Concord, Massachusetts, and then command them on to victory over the king's army. The men who may have won the war for him with victories at Cowpens and Saratoga were feasting that very day at Morgan's estate. Hugh Stevenson, an old family friend of the Washingtons with land on the Bullskin Run, received word from Washington to raise a company of men and Daniel Morgan of Winchester, with a long record of carousing and for fighting that included one fight that ended with him biting off a man's nose, was chosen to raise another company in Virginia. Their orders were to report to Concord immediately. Only the time that Sheets's gunsmith shop in Shepherdstown needed to make premium rifles to match the almost incredible shooting prowess of these woodsmen, kept them from starting the march to Concord almost immediately. General Gates, who lived down the road at Traveler's Rest, wrote Washington that the request for riflemen was well received, calling Morgan and Stevenson excellent for the service. With Daniel Morgan's over-enlisted company of men, drilling near Winchester. Stevenson's 98 men were also drilling in the lot behind the site of the Entner Hotel in Shepherdstown. All the while, their wives and sisters were embroidering Patrick Henry's immortal words, liberty or death, on their homespun hunting shirts. Each man was suited out with a round hat with a bucktail, sometimes with two, a hunting shirt fringed around the neck and down the front, leather leggings and moccasins, some just wearing Indian breeches, each a scalping knife on one hip and a tomahawk on the other, each a wild, imposing sight. Shepherdstown has been designated by the Secretary of the Army as the birthplace of the U.S. Army because these Virginians grasped the concept of a national army so clearly that they were going to walk over 600 miles in sweltering summer heat through backwoods to join their commander in Concord. Morgan's men broke a sporting promise with Stevenson's men to meet and go together from Frederick to Concord by stealing a march July 11th, arriving in Frederick, Maryland on the 17th. Stevenson's fuming men started from Shepherdstown on that day. On Monday, Captain Morgan from Virginia, with his company of riflemen, all chosen, marched through this place on their way to Boston, wrote a Frederick gentleman to a friend in Baltimore July 19th. Their appearance was truly martial, their spirit amazingly elated, breathing nothing but a desire to join the American army and to engage the enemies of American liberties. All these men forged on through a hot July, making an astonishing 30 miles a day. These frontier-hardened men were used to it, starting from Sharpsburg, Fredericktown, 
Yorktown, on to Allentown, Easton, Fishkill, New York, Litchfield, Connecticut, Farmington, Hartford, Connecticut, Watertown, and then finally Cambridge.